kind of going through that. Um, still riding and lifting and same old and kind of reaching out to people like you to start a podcast series that has been really beneficial. You were one of the first people that I thought of because you're <laughs> so, and I'm, I've, I like to put people on the spot with a question right off the bat because yeah. the whole point of this series is, you know, I listen to interviews sometimes. It's more someone just talking about themselves and it's cool to hear someone's origin story and everything, but there's so many cyclists that have so much knowledge that when we've been doing this for so long, we forgot all the yeah. stuff we've learned that you can talk to a cat four or a cat five or even a cat three. And they're like, Whoa, like it, you just helped me in this conversation, speed up my learning process so much. And you are a super crafty guy. And <laughs> you know, a couple races come to mind. You always though, put yourself, you know, when to fire off the bullets and you're patient at times and you seem to be in right positions at times and you know one that definitely comes to mind to me was the Tennessee State road race where I was doing too much work yeah did they have that for the road race yeah yeah they gave us mugs so dude (laughs) so I got one for the crit and that's what I was back there for because I have one from the year before yeah and So you played that road race really well. Like you weren't seen until things hit the fan and you ended up winning. And fast forward the next day, I'm like, dude, this guy Raleigh's here. (laughs) Absolutely made my day when after the race, and we can get into that, but you came up and be like, yo, dude, that was a beautiful move. And like that really made me feel so good coming from you um how you know it just made the w that much more well well, well, what happened in that race to you too i was mad for you uh and you remember what happened in the road race because that was just i mean that's happened to me every florida race i go to really that happens to me and i just oh this makes me so it it's you know (laughs) i don't mind if i get ganged up on if that allows that team to win it is just this – so I, I'm in Memphis now. I used to live in Nashville. Yeah. There's this little middle Tennessee bubble where one team does not really race to win. They race so other people don't win. And I don't understand that. And I kind of – I actually put a video out, like, after the race, not trying to take a jab, but just like, hey, yeah, race to win. Like, we had this guy from Georgia come in and clean everyone's clock because everyone was concerned about me – and you had 10 people. You should have won. That, like, And they're talented cyclists, too. They're just kind of, I don't know. There was, there was Hausler there. There's Brendan Sullivan there. That's when we got off the front. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is just. Like, oh, my God. And they had, like, I think, I think seven like, guys. Like, right? Whenever you attack, there are, like, seven guys following you. And Dude, I was like, come on, man. It was a hell of a workout. But uh, <laughs> you and Olheiser afterwards was like, hey, man, thanks for, like, taking all the punches today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do? Um, so my question is, because I, I want people to be able to, like, tune in real quick, and even if they yeah. left after five minutes, what do you think, since you being a, a smart mental cranial rider, what do you think are tactical errors, two or three, that a lot of people make? Or maybe what's – and then maybe, like, what's the cherry? Like, what's your – was there a moment when you started learning that you had to think more? as you kind of upgrade once you get to like cat one you know there's so many people yeah. within a the physical capabilities you're so close and it is this thing that's going to help more than just the legs yeah um there's so much with tactics i want to i want to tell a quick story yeah and then if that's okay for sure yeah when i uh when i first started getting cycling there's a guy called jack gonzalez he was uh, he was off uh, forty at this time, but jacked. I was huge, just ripped. I was seventeen years old, little surfer guy, long hair, and um, he's from my city. And we'd just go, we'd go at it with each other. But he was always so much stronger than me. And we we got into the Florida State Criterium Championship, Cat Five, sixty or seventy guys in the race. And uh, of course, we didn't do a break. Me, Jack, and another guy. Mm-hmm. And there was a there's a little climb and a descent. So first tactical question: You were in a uh, you're in a crit with a climb and a descent. Where do you pull? 
I'm going to pull on the – I guess I'm going to – You didn't expect questions from me, did you? <laughs> no, I like this. I'm thinking, like, you know, you want to be pulling on the uphill because there's not really much draft. Exactly. But if it's a crit, I'm almost thinking are you going – it depends on, like, how long of a climb is it, you know? So I guess – because then it depends – if you're with somebody else who's faster, I would sometimes almost say – if they're going to let you pull at your pace, don't let them pull up the climb because then you're going to be at their dictating the pace. But yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. So, but most likely you want to be pulling uphill because there's no draft for them anyways. Exactly. They, everybody and first. so many guys don't get that. Mm -hmm. it, it just blows my mind. Okay. So when well, you're coming out, you get pace lining. So, so many guys don't. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. We're gonna, this is like a this is like an A and A confession session. But okay. So first les lesson, you climb up the climb. There's less drag. You make him climb uh pull on the descent, there's more drag. Mm -hmm. Wind was coming out of the uh, it's tailwind going up the uh, cross tailwind. Mm -hmm. So on the descent, you take the left hand side. Bam. Mm -hmm. That's already a couple points for the sprint. The guy was so he got he got in a he has a cat five, I think, I'm a 52, 40, 40, um, 40 kilometer time trial. Mm -hmm. So the guy is, I mean, the guy's an animal. He, he mm -hmm. still is. He's one of my good friends now. Um, gone to the break, made him do that. And then he thought he was the strongest guy. With two laps to go, he took over the front. Okay. And then at the sprint, going up the sprint, cross tailwind. Uh, coming from the left-hand side, where do you take the sprint, the left or the right-hand side, when you want to pass him? If you're going to pass him, you want to be going on the right-hand side. So you can... Well, it's across tailwinds. So it's coming from behind you on the left? Yeah. yeah. So I guess you want to be on the left, so you're yeah. and shooting off. Yeah, because you want that shoot. And yeah. I got him by, by an inch. And... Uh, I was 17. That was my first, I was first cat five race actually. And that kind of put the balls in motion, That's, but they get that, that soon. There's so, there, it's these little things you think that that's not going to matter. You know? Oh yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's nice. But you know, mm -hmm. whoever's going to win is going to win. That's, that's not true. When you're in like a two week race, when you're racing in tour of Morocco, you know, Toward Uruguay and China, when you're doing these these little things, like being, it makes so much of it. You know what I'm talking about. It's just you think, oh, that's nothing. Well, dude, I, I you know I don't have as much experience. And that's one thing that's on my list of like talking about the international pro racing yeah. you've done. When I tour of New Zealand um, was the first like week long race, and so many races here in the U.S. Even if it's like a or a stage race it might be like two crits you know and lo loving road races and long races that's what i would love to still have yeah. get more experience with because those it's so easy to come out strong in stage one and stage two but what happens on day six when you burned all those matches and exactly. it was really crazy to see the when i first my first race as a cat one was uh green mountain up in vermont the stage race yeah. and ted king came down and I wanted to get in that race because I knew he was going to be there. I wanted to be able to like, see this dude race. And I was such an irritant to the USA cycling person because I won. Um, oh, there's a big crit outside of New York. Oh, God, I totally blanked on the name. But I won the Cat 2. So I'm like, oh, my God, I have enough points. I need to upgrade so I can be in yeah. this race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But watching Ted King, you know, you're in Vermont. You're doing these climbs. There's rollers. There's everything seeing where he went all the time it was like oh the wind's coming from the right and you would look and he's like tucked in on the left behind four guys and it's, just, it's really in these guys just here just and i'm like this is what i need to learn like he's not even yeah. thinking he's just riding and yeah. people you know i tell people all the time people are like oh i got boxed and i'm like dude you boxed yourself in you weren't yeah. thinking what's happening next you were just pedaling and yeah there's so like you're saying man there's so many people that i can look at their watts per kg and i'm like that's great that's half now you need to learn how to yeah. race yeah. and even justin williams was on a podcast like six months ago i think with um 
I, I can never remember this. Bahama Longbottom. That's his Instagram. Uh, Bahati. Bahati. No, it's the, no. the dude with the mustache. Uh, track rate. Anyways, he was like. Oh, me- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's half of it. And it was really yeah. good to hear him, someone who has a much bigger platform, telling people, like, racing is not just who's the strongest. Like, so anyways, well, that's, let's, so I think that's the thing of, like, you're saying there's not just, you can't even just hit three things. Like, what would you say is another mistake then besides, like, tactical errors? Maybe it's just that people aren't studying the tactics or maybe people are yeah. only relying on, fitness because now i think in the past i've been cycling seriously for i started in what was it 2009 so about 10 years i would say in the last half so much more has been overly metric focused like i've got to be at 215 watts for x amount of minutes and and if i deviate by two percent i have totally failed whereas when i started dudes were like go ride long stay in this area yeah. and you know that's your ride for the day um so i think the uh i think it's good and it's bad but the new um uh, the indoor cycling mm-hmm. uh it's really pushing guys towards that that watts that pure power and that's great but that doesn't always convert to uh, to the road yeah uh, it's great and it's good guys in the sport i think it's awesome but i think some guys like with anything they go overboard in that and they get anal into the uh, the numbers mm-hmm. and then the guys get get popped at their local uh road race so right. we'll see how that goes i think also too a lot of that is people have to remember that you know a lot of that is a product so people yeah. can say hey you're gonna increase your ftp 25 points so you're like i'm winning and then yeah. Yeah. never went over that FTP number. And you're like, I'm off the back. Wait a minute. I thought I was stronger now. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's bike racing is different, but, um, you know, it was actually, I think that guy that you were talking about, he, I was reading this article as I was just, you know, doing a little rally weaver Googling. Before. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> he, he had said at the time I was stronger than that guy, but he had a coach. He was riding a lot smarter and he saved. Uh, oh yeah. It was a ride up. Yeah. And then in the newspaper about that. Yeah. yeah. By by an inch. And I was like, okay, Jack, I hit on that. that's awesome. Jack was furious. Jack's one of my really good friends. He just texted me this morning, actually. Jack's one of my really good friends now. Uh, but after the race, he was furious. Um, actually, Actually, when I won the uh, the Florida State uh, Road Race Championship, he's a bike shop in uh, the bike shop in Norman Beach. It's called. I actually gave him my my Florida State jersey just for all the help he's given me over the years, and uh, you had a little moment. But yeah, Jack's a great guy, man. <laughs> and so, how many state championships have you won? Georgia, Florida, Tennessee. Um, one or two others in there. Alabama. I've won uh, South Carolina. Oh, don't get me started on Alabama. Um, I'll get back to that in just a second. <laughs> I won uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and uh, in Alabama, that was like three weeks ago. I hit it with, I think, six laps to go, and I got caught 200 meters from the line. We messed up the elite out train. My team thought I was, I was gone, and they, they started leading out the sprinter. Oh, no. And it was a miscommunication there, and uh, <laughs> got caught. Yeah, we're like on the final turn, but yeah, I'm not. Whatever. I'm You'll be still... back for that one. Yeah. What's, for... So, what do you think it is that you know having this crackness? You know, I've seen it in races where you're a guy that I'm like, I'm waiting to see when he goes. Yeah. Um, is it just something on your shoulder that's like, dude, now's the time? Are you looking for something? Or is it instinct? How can a new rider learn what this is? Because I try to teach people yeah. the fact that, like, this is why you go do training races. This is why you go experiment with stuff. To the, to the rider who is like, well, you know, I need to sit in because da, da, da. I'm like, no, you need to go try stuff. Because the more you try, like, if you think, should I go, should I not go? It's too late. You missed it. Like, for me, it's just there's something that's like, dude, go now. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. But the yeah. more you do it and the more you learn about yourself, I can be like, there's no way I can get away right now because of X, Y, and Z. Um, what is, what's, how is that working in your head? 
Um, it's a lot of feeling, but it, mm -hmm. it's a lot of just thinking about it. Remember when you uh, when you hit it in uh, in Tonga, mm -hmm. when you sold it up into the break? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that was a move. That, when he went, I went, dang it. <laughs> like, that was the perfect time. <laughs> I saw you just riding off, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, he's uh, – I mean, the guys in the break, they were dead. You were fresh. You went right before the climb. You're going to catch him on the climb. You're going to break – you're going to – you're going to – they're not gonna, they're not gonna hold your wheel. I mean, the power you had that day. The guys had been in the break for what, seventy miles? Yeah, they were Perfect. roasted. Perfect move. <laughs> um, but coming back to that, it's it's a lot. Um, when I was in uh, the North Carolina State Championship, really climbing stage, I, I got I got away with one of the Novo Nordisk guys, and uh, he was killing me. <laughs> He was killing me. We we were taking pulls like these minute pulls, just destroying each other. On the last lap, you can see him breathing, you know whatnot. And you're always looking for these cues. You're looking for okay, how's this pedal motion? Is he? When guys get tired, they they'll, sometimes they'll bring up their heel, and they're kind of like um, like a little cat as they're pedaling. They'll bring it up. Or like a dog swimming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. when uh, everyone has. <laughs> Never heard, yeah. I'm telling you all my secrets, friend. You better not. No, that's don't a, tell anyone. <laughs> hold on. There, is, there have been people in, like, I go in and chat with people in forums, and they're like, I don't yeah. expect you to give off trade secrets. I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I'm doing. And yeah. like, I hate yeah. the other coaches who are like, I talked to a guy one time and asked him a question. He's like, yo, you should ask your coach about that. And I was like, dude, <laughs> I thought we were like, cool. Okay, cool. That's, uh, I, I call those people, they're hoarders. They don't want – those people, they, they'll get, like, um, same thing with real estate. Like, they won't give – real estate guys, they won't give, like, any information because it's their little secrets. Mm -hmm. But there's the other type of – the abundance people. They believe that there's enough for everyone to go around, and I believe that too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, okay, hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> in motion, okay? I like to try to pu push my heel down to get more of the quad mm -hmm. because it's more – when you – when you raise your heel, it's more of your um, calf muscle. Mm -hmm. um, other people, this way you have to be cognizant of this. You have to watch uh, how you people have to are watch before they get motion. Tired. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the guy, he was raising his heel. I was like, okay, that's point number one. And on the last lap, he was drinking a lot of water, point number two. Normally when someone's super tired, they're going to be pounding down the water. Uh and point number three, he, re like, really quickly, almost like panically, went for a gel to eat. Yeah, that's kind of, why would he do it so quick? You know, normally you take a pull, you go to the back, you don't know. He was, he was like, searching for his gel. I got I to gotta hit this guy. Yeah. Okay. He's you know, right just when, flustered. Waiting for <laughs> <that>. <laughs> right when I, when I got it, I hit him right away. Um. I was pulling. I looked back. I said, I got to go. Bam. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, he just mm – -hmm. I, I swallowed in for that one. Um, really, really beautiful victory. And that's the thing. This You're, like, really hitting on this. It's – you get to the race. You're taking inventory of people as yeah. the race goes on. You're not all of a sudden, like, I think I'm going to attack. Like, there's so much thought that goes into it. And while some of it is rapid fire – you can be in the break sometimes and as fast as you're going, like things get into slow motion and you're like, yeah. it's yeah. just, and the more you think through it. And that's why I think, you know, yeah, it's really interesting to hear that. I like that. And that's, you know, I want to, I think I've won more races than I should have because of this. Yeah. And that's why it's like, when I see a guy like you, who I'm like, God, dude, this dude's crafty. I really got to watch out for him. And I've been on the, the punch the end of it and it's like yeah oh, and then you okay. won the crit the next the next day okay come on <laughs> <laughs> which i won on the road race though i won on the road race. It was a gaming chip and it was just like but you know one one thing too that i don't get why people do this but okay there's three guys in the race okay let's say there's there's you and two other super strong guys mm -hmm. whenever the super strong guy attacks everyone says oh Brendan's attacking. You know, we have to follow Brendan. Oh, you know, why don't you? Okay, why don't you let that go in a counterattack? Why don't guys? I've seen you do this, so I know you agree with me. Why don't you not go with the strong guys? 
it's this counter it's just like guys like this is brendan is a masters national champion brendan can ride okay the guy knows what he's doing why don't you follow him and then counterattack him you do why do you why do people go with the strongest it just blows every single time it blows my mind i say it <laughs> i say it in a different way when there's someone stronger you want yeah. to ride away from them you want, yeah, you yeah. want to be in the group that's not with him so like you're saying yeah if he attacks and a break is forming. Sure, you can't let it necessarily always go. Yeah. But you need to be thinking, how can I get away from this guy? Not, I need to shadow him. If you shadow him, guess what happens? He's going to beat you. He's fat. You know he's yeah. faster than you. Like, yeah. And it's just got to re-engineer it. And that's what it's uh, – man, there's, there's a race where um, – Oh man, he raced for Silver Pro Cycling. He got injured and he was making a comeback. Ryan Roth. And yeah. he, we're going into a local race and Ryan Roth comes down and we're like, is that Ryan Roth? Ryan Roth? And I was like, oh, like we thought we had a game plan. We had, there's guys from Canada coming down. So we knew who was there. Yeah. Like, All right, this yeah. is it just like blew up any game plan whatsoever. And I'm like, this, hey, all we got to do is get away from that dude. And so, yeah. I was like, you know what? There's one major climb. He, we're not going to drop him on that. We need to try and get people away before the climb. There's this little thing. Like, how can we get away from this guy? Make it where then everybody looks to him to do all the work. And it actually ended up working. We won the race. But everyone's like, oh, my God, so-and-so's here. The race is over. It's like, no, dude, start thinking. Like, be smarter. It's, it's there's one so much psychology in this sport. It's ridiculous. Um, you remember, remember Tonga, the Tonga won the crit? Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember that crit. That corner was killing me. <laughs> I hate cornering. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I remember you were off the front, uh, like in the first like three laps. Like, there goes Brendan. <laughs> like, like, you know, first race, I'm like, maybe I was talking to, it was either Michael or Tanner. And yeah. Michael Hernandez, one was like, I don't think people are going to be fit. And the other was like, I think a lot of people are going to be fit. So I was like, well, I'm just going to test and see what happens. Yeah. Because, yeah. Well, yeah. I was in the back when you hit it. And I was, uh, oh, my oh. Lord. I, I, saw your, I saw your uniform go. And I'm like frantically trying to get to the front. And there's all these like cat two, cat threes ahead of me. And it's, oh, it was, it was horrible. But this is a good, perfect example for the tactics. Okay, we had, we had four guys in our break. Okay. We had Huntling, super strong sprinter uh, from Atlanta. Uh, more of a crit rider, less of a road racer. I think you know Huntley. Um, a strong Cat 2 guy. And uh, what's his name? Uh, your homeboy from yeah. Arkansas. Tanner. Yeah, Tanner is – Tanner was super strong. I was, Tanner has that extra gear, that overdrive is like – Yeah. So I'm sitting there. I've been working at my hotel, man, this whole year. Okay. <laughs> like I've been working. So I'm trying to make as much as I can this year. So I don't have to work next season. Okay. So at this race, we, we went, we had, we, we got around, we were lapping the, I think we lapped the, yeah, we lapped the main Peloton. So you have time to think, you know, you're going hard, but you're thinking. Mm -hmm. so, okay. We got the strong cat two guy. He's strong, but I don't really know him. Okay. He's probably going to get dropped. Okay, bam, get him out of here. I got, I got a podium. Awesome. What's going to happen? Who is the best sprinter? Huntley's the best sprinter. Huntley will beat me sprinting nine times out of ten. Who is the strongest overall rider? Tanner. Mm -hmm. How is this going to play out? Tanner's going to have to hit it. Tanner's strong, but he's – I remember the last couple of years, he hasn't been a very good uh, corner. Okay? That's, one of, that's probably one of his only chinks in his armor. I think it's better now, but this is what I have to work on, mm -hmm. uh, cornering. Okay. The last turn, sharp cur turn, followed by a uh, climb. So I was thinking I might do better in the sprint, again, with a little, a little climb. Mm -hmm. But I think like this, Tanner's going to hit it. He's going to have to hit it before the race. Who's the strongest sprinter? Huntley. He's, he's going to have to respond. Otherwise, he's going to lose and Tanner's going to win. That's exactly what happened. Okay, <laughs> two laps to go. Tanner hit. I'm, I'm just waiting for it. Sorry. This is my game plan. If I lose, I lose. This, right. But every person has a card. You have you have a coach. You realize that. Mm -hmm. You see some of these guys. This guy's a sprinter. This guy has those fast twitch muscles. We have to work him into sprinting situations. Okay, and I have my card that I have to play. Mm -hmm. um, 
Tanner, I hit it with two laps. And I look over at Huntley. <laughs> I'm not – I'm not – okay, that, that's all Huntley. If Huntley wants to win – if Huntley wants to win the race, he has to respond. Yeah. Because I'm not pulling him back. Huntley's going to jump me yeah. and win. Okay? Huntley pulled it pulled it until the start finish, right? And then right at, with a lap to go. And right when we were 50 meters from, from Tanner, Tanner's gassed. He's been going, killing it for that whole lap. Huntley's gassed. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's like, too easy. Out. And I hit it on, on the climb. I, uh, I passed Huntley. I got into uh, Tanner's uh, slipstream. Bam, hit him. I mean, it's just, it's too easy. Yeah. And I sold him for the, for, the, for the victory. That's a perfect example of the tactics. You have a plan. And sometimes it goes that way. <clears throat> and what did Tyson say? Everyone has a plan until they're punched in the mouth, right? Uh, and sometimes it does not go that way. Like in, uh, in Mobile, in the Alabama State Championship. Like, that was my plan. But my plan wasn't uh, get pulled back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's really good too. I think a lot of times being able to be nimble with the plan because a lot of newer riders, you know, well, well, yeah. Both both those guys were stronger than me that day. Uh, Tanner was ten times. He destroyed me in the time trial. He, it just like it was horrible. Mm -hmm. And Huntley destroyed me in the. Uh, both of them were stronger than me. Uh, that's why tactics are so important. What do you think that – so I'm surprised to hear that Tanner went with two to go. That's kind of far in my mind because Tanner's yeah. so strong that I would – if I was Tanner, I would have been going on that climb. And I think that, you know, get away. Because – so for people that don't know the race, you go through the start finish, you take a right, you go up, up a little climb, and then it's kind of yeah. like falls flat on the backside, and then it's down. And if he can get around that last corner ahead of you guys, I think he, he wins. Um, but we're not gonna let him go. We're not gonna let him go. He it was a, it was a good move because he went after the climb on the false false flat when uh, when your legs are shot. It's maybe a lap and a three quarters. Okay. So you think two laps? He's not gonna hold it. You know maybe. Yeah. He, he went. He went a good time. I mean, it was, it was he played his card because if it's a lap to go, I'm not letting him go. Yeah. You know, um, and Hunt is not letting him go because we've been we. we We've been eyeing, and everyone's doing these calculations. If you make right. it to a cat one, you know, you're, you're doing these calculations. Totally. Yeah. That's such a, I just, ah, I'm like, God, I want to race so badly. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's killing me, man. Like, it's foam killing me. Foam in the mouth. Foam in yeah. the mouth. Um, what's, let's talk about the team in China that you raced with and how you got linked up with them. And maybe even jumping before that, you started, did you start racing in 2013? Yeah, I raced. How'd you get into this? And uh, let's hit okay. the origin story real quick. Yeah, we'll go way back, but I raced uh, 2008. It was my first race, my first state championship. Um, I was 17. So you're so, 29. You're 30 now. Oh man, I'm 29. <laughs> Are you 29? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're, that's what it was. I looked on whatever racing age. Yeah, yeah, man, we're getting old, Brandon. Dude, I'm almost. <laughs> I'm. I'm 38. I'm gonna be going to <laughs> you're like you're like my uh, you're my uh, you're my inspiration. <laughs> okay, I'm but... inspiration. I want to be inspired, dude. <laughs> okay. Um. That's Owen shot. Owen shots in 40. Oh years. man. And I was yeah. like, woo, bro. Okay, so I saw when I was 17. I got on a really good development program, ORC, Orlando Road Club. Okay. All the Florida pros basically came out of that program. Um, I, I had no business being there. Like they were so much, they were so much better at everything than I was. Um, I got onto that. They really helped me for my first year. But then I went to um, uh, I went to Ecuador for student exchange, mm -hmm. uh, and I learned Spanish there for a year. And then I went to Eastern Europe for almost two years, and uh, enrolled in a linguistic university in Belarus. As I came back, I really got into uh, getting into racing and cycling once I entered USF. Um, one thing I want to talk about is if you want to be successful in this sport, you need a coach. 
you need someone you need someone to and this is something you do well i i've uh been been watching you you need to you your coach needs to be a cheerleader and a drill sergeant it's about destroying destroying the athlete in training and bringing them up because mm. you know better than everyone this is a roller coaster mm-hmm. the highest of highs are brought by the lowest of lows and it's not about it's not you see you know we see one side you know we see the facebook oh wow raleigh was won a uci race in the Dominican republic oh that's so cool you, you do not see what the, the issues, the problems that had to be passed to get there. It's just like, it's, I can't, like, I don't want to say like, oh, my life is so hard, but we only see one side, man. Yeah. Well, it's like that picture that's been on like social media where they show the podium and then beneath yeah. the ground, it's like hard work, dedication, motivation, da, 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 like all these other things that go into it. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is I've had athletes that I've coached for like six months and they're like, dude, I want to be winning races like you do. And I want to be doing these crazy mega weekends. And I'm like, dude, I've ridden 120,000 miles. You've yeah. ridden for yeah. six months. Like it, yeah. just, that's not endurance sports. I think it's something with a social media with like instant gratification, the culture we live in. Uh, hundred percent cycling, whether we like it or not, cycling is blue collar. Mm-hmm. It's blue. It's white collar, like the uh, the lawyers, the 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 very high class that get into it. But the real, the guys that are winning races are blue collar. <laughs> like don't like it's it's a clashing of cultures. And people people think if I get this ten thousand dollar bike, I'm gonna. I've never trained with power. You know, I've yeah. never trained. Never. And damn, uh, that's when people talk about watts. I'm like, oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Cool. You're like, that's cool, but. <laughs> in some of these races, in one of these races, I won, what was it? Um, I think it was a Georgia State Road race. It was super climb. It was 8,000 feet of climbing. This guy was, this guy that got second, he's like, I sold in. I got four minutes. I soloed in, like, three laps to go. The guy's like, what was your, what was your watch for KG? It's like, my house 344 times 3.75. Oh. I was like, dude, I was like, I beat you by three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, okay. <laughs> it is. I don't. I. I know it helps. You know. I know it's good. I know it's a good tool. But, but it's you just can't that. put too much at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to suffer. I've had people that have been like, "Yo, my power meter died, so I went home," and I was like, "I just." Been, but it blows my mind. Their power meter is dead, so that week of training, they just don't really train. I'm like, you could you could do rate of perceived exertion. You could go ride. You could just. Yeah. Like the people won the tour to who's there are a ton of people that won a tour de France with no power meter. Like Valverde, I'm, Valverde only uses a uh, heart rate to this day. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's a great tool. I love it, but it gets so much like everybody's obsessed with it. People are using metrics. They don't understand the application to actually racing like the the biggest thing is you know I don't even get me on a tangent yeah <laughs> keep going with your story I I can't remember what your question was what, what was your question I'm I'm so, I'm big uh, on yeah do an origin story where where okay. yeah you started in 2008 and then yeah I'm mostly curious of when did you how did you link up with this team out of China and when did all that happen and what have you kind of learned from this next stage of yeah it, racing internationally is a different different ball game. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I got back to USF. Uh, I've been writing uh, for my years at the in Eastern Europe, the Linguistic University. I've been training in negative thirty, you know, over there in, in Belarus. Uh, so I, I had the power, you know. Not outside. <laughs> outside. Yeah. 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 Negative, negative thirty 30. Celsius. Negative thirty Celsius. Yeah. So I come back and. Uh, I was hooked up with USF Cycling. Um, I had a fire, man. I really wanted to get it. Um, put up with Brian from Ciclo Sudori. The guy is just, again, the guy, like, he had no business coaching us. The guy is just 180 IQ level. The guy is a genius. Mm-hmm. We got hooked up with him, and um, we'd have team train every Tuesday and Wednesday, motor pacing behind the car. We'd have team camp, week-long camps. Uh, 
the guy just brought my level up so high. I got into these, oh, I felt so, these four or five races, just, <laughs> just smoked these Keep guys. Alive. Yeah, I got up to a cat four, smoked these guys, got up to a cat three, smoked these guys, got up to a cat one, two. And then when you're in cat two, you know, you, like, that's a different level. Cat three to cat two, mm-hmm. like, the boys can ride. Mm-hmm. especially in Florida. We had a lot of uh, back in the day. Florida's solid state. I'm- and e- even before, man, like we has, we'd have pros coming up from Latin America, coming up from Miami, and these guys are just stallions. And like, I'm still like... <laughs> Dude, I did tour of South Florida this year, and I was like, people are yeah. ripping in February. Like, that was yeah. fun. So I got hooked up with him, and then I did well, and... Uh, what was the duration from going from Cat 5 to Cat 1? I did it in one season. Did you in one cat, season? I went to Cat 2 in one season. And I think, I think I got one in one season. I'm pretty sure. It was either the very beginning, the end of the very beginning of the season. I think I caught up in Daily on Springs. I think it was the first race of the season. I think it was four or five months. I can't remember. But it was pretty quick. Yeah. Super um, cool. Yeah. Then I left USF. And, and I need to make a point on that, actually. If you look up you in – I thought I raced a pretty decent amount. You were racing like 40 to 50 races a year, which is <laughs> – you know. That was – that was uh, from Pioneer Mortgage. Yes. Uh, Scott, without Scott you – know, you, know, you know Scott? I don't know Scott. Okay, without Scott's support – like I had no money. But without Scott's support, there's no way I could have uh, – Scott. Yeah, Scott Cook, no. Um, but for some, I don't know somehow, but all throughout my career, I've had these people. I'm not sure if it's God, I'm not sure it's destiny, but they've been placed in my life mm-hmm. that have helped me so much. Just making these these connections. Without, without Scott, there's no, I work as a lifeguard. I'm like, I was a cat one too, working as a lifeguard, working eight hours, going out and training. And going out on the weekends and just trying to, you know, get these cat up points. But without Scott's support, there's no way I could have done this. Without every person in my life support. But, okay, I got up to a cat. I was a cat one at this point, And uh, I started to venture out of Florida. And I was like, I need a coach. I need a coach out here that can support me. And I'm doing the uh, Crossroads race. I think you raced that. It was uh, – it was, week, it was a week long back in the day. Really? So we had, yeah, we had Georgia Grand Prix. That was a week long. Was it Crossroads? Yeah. Yeah, it's Crossroads Cycling Classic. It was North and South Carolina. Uh-huh. Really good races with good money. So we had Georgia Grand Prix. That was a week. And then you could go directly to Crosswinds, which is a week long. So you could have a two-week long of racing. So I'm up there doing this race. No idea what I'm doing. I'm just attacking you know it's like i was <laughs> trying to get something done and there was hank happy there uh back when they they were super strong that year they had miguel byron they had um mm. and so my year, wife what year are we talking around uh what was this 14 15 okay so my wife we speak russian with my wife and, and that's from when you went to Belarus, or do you have Russian? Yeah, 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 I learned Russian there, um, which is a whole other story. <laughs> but, uh, and there was the, uh, the Novo Nordisk team, and they all had Russian coaches. They had uh, Alexei Schmidt. He rode for uh, Katusha back in the day. Oh, wow. He had all these guys. I'm like, okay, whoa. My wife started to talk to them. They're like, hey, my, my, my oh, husband, yeah, back in the day, wants to um, – needs a coach. And Yosha got his contact with Gleb Groisman. Gleb had no business coaching me. The guy, <laughs> the guy was um, was the Russian national team coach. Wow. Okay. The guy was the just the amount of knowledge that Gleb has is just. We sat down and he watched me race. I guess he saw something, but he started coaching me and. That's really what brought me to the next level. I had a little, I'm a good local rider. You know, I can get podiums in a, in a local one, two, two. Okay, you got to bring up the bar. And it was systematic. It was professional. It was 
this is your life training. The one thing, like, you can play basketball, you know, you can play football, but cycling is a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And you, it doesn't end. <laughs> you know, it'd be great, man. After, like, training, you go and get, like, a, you know, a, a Twinkie bar, you know, and just, like, start go, chowing down food, but it doesn't work that way. It's a lifestyle. And with Blip, I understood that. And I worked my ass off, you know, ass backside off to uh, to get to where I got. Uh, get on that lifestyle a little bit more. Like, yeah. you know, going back to the Instagram, instant gratification, I want to ride eight hours a week and be a superstar. It's not, it's not that. It's continual day in, day out, making the right choices. What do you see as the cycling lifestyle? Um, or on that point, like what is detrimental that a ton of athletes are doing that you see that it's just like, man, that's not the way to do it. Or just explain to people a little bit more what, how you see the lifestyle. When you say, hey, this is a lifestyle, like what do you mean? For some reason, people like are against getting uh, miles. I don't know if that's like an, it's a, it's like a, because it takes like time. A, a new age thing or something. I, I saw. What's I saw a short, coach, shortcut? You know what I mean? It's like, how do I not do that? It's, it's like, uh, what do you say? It's like seven hours to to pro cycling a week. Um, it just what do you, what do you got? Like fourteen thousand, twelve thousand this, this year. year? Yeah, I'm about to hit 15 today, actually. That's, that's incredible. It's crazy. I do it. It's because of COVID. I mean, if I had been racing, <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> well, because there's no races. Like, I, I yeah. had, like, a block where it was just, like, 500, 500, 400, 500. Like, that's just, awesome, man. I want to get a uh, – by the way, I want I want to get a, um, a, uh, a trip across Colorado with you if you want to meet up. But a week-long trip. In. Dude, but hold on a second. Hold on, you. So we're gonna get derailed here. But on the stand, <laughs> I was actually thinking about you when you did your crazy long cross country. Was did, it? did I call you? Did I invite you? I think. No, you didn't. You were one of the guys. Oh, okay, not, I wanted to invite. I did, not get that, I did not get that invite. But <laughs> how did you bring clothes and stuff, or did you just wash a kid every night in the sink? I wanted to invite you if it makes any difference. Like you were one of the guys on my list. It's like I want to invite Brendan. I um, would do it. Here's the thing, though. I'm not yeah. like, using the camping and carting shit. And like, I didn't camp. I didn't camp. Okay. I'm not a camp. I'm like I'm not. I camp, but I don't cycle in camp because they're all dirty and whatnot. No, no, no. How do we? But okay, I'll, I'll tell you this quick, man. Two kids. Like, what's the deal here? No, I need. I'm. I'm, I'm like hardcore, but I, I'm like clean hardcore. I don't do dirty hardcore. But yeah. um, I can be on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know we have a. We have a little uh, bed and breakfast hotel here yeah. in Helen, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so for COVID, the government shut down all of the hotels here in Helen, Georgia. And I'm like, I'm going crazy. It's like, I have my mortgage payment. I have all my payments. I'm sitting at home. Like, Dasha, my wife, like, I got to do something. Like, I got I to gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta do, like, a training camp. Or I got to do something. I'm going crazy. Like, I can't travel anywhere. The borders are closed. Losing money hand over fist. And I've always wanted to do this trip across the U.S. I've researched it. Uh, like, read blogs about it. You know, it's like, screw it. Uh, it was, it was Monday, and I knew like if I plan, I'm gonna talk myself out of it. You know, I'm like, oh, you know, it's gonna. What if I get a flat? <laughs> you know, what if it breaks? And I said, yeah, screw it. I just bought the ticket. I bought it for a Wednesday. And so like I was like, dang it, I like I wanted to do. My buddy was thinking about doing it with me from Miami. So I'm like, hey, you ready to do this? He's like, well, when are we going? I was like, well, we're going Wednesday. Wednesday. And he's like, no, no, no. I called Owen. And Owen's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. When are we going? He's like, I'm like, Wednesday. And it's like, okay, screw it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it on my own. Um, so I bought to take to San Diego. And like, I'm, I'm in, the, I'm in the, the plane in the airport. I'm like trying to read about blogs, like the best route to take, okay? So yeah, screw it. I'm just going to work it out. I'm going to find a city 100 miles to the east. I'm going to go to that city. Um, so I, ra- I arrived to San Diego, I, I put together my bike in the airport and I just rolled out from the baggage claim on my bike 
and uh, I brought two kits, a pair of clothes, and like 10 tubes. And I just, I rolled out of the airport and I went towards the city on my iPhone and whatnot. Got in 100 miles. And uh, the next day I got in 150 and I just picked a city east. I just went to that city and it was amazing. Like I did the whole thing in 17 days, so I averaged 140 miles with uh, God, dude. with zero rest days. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I was, I was like, I'm getting the weekend. I'm, I'm gonna take a break, and then I got to the West Texas. I was like, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna waste a, a rest day here. You know, it's like all, it was all like oil rigs. Like there was nothing out there. So I'm just keep going. I got to uh, like the Arkansas and Alabama. Like, wow, well, I'm just gonna keep going, man. So, uh, wow. but Dude. it was amazing, Brent. Like, it, I can see you doing this, but like, it was amazing. You're on the bike for eight. My biggest day was 200 miles. You're on the bike for eight, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, and there's no one. It's just you, and it's just like. It's like a meditation session for 10 hours. It was just, it was amazing. Uh, crossing New Mexico, you're at eight, seven, eight thousand feet elevation. And you look out and there's just a range with, uh, with mountains, there's ranches out there. I went 80 miles without seeing a soul. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's awesome. It's crazy. New Mexico is beautiful. I've only oh, driven man. through and really, uh, I was talking to Brandon a lot last week and they go out there and uh, yeah, it was incredible. I couldn't, I, for some reason, I don't think New Mexico high elevation, like when you're driving to Colorado, that's when you start to like having to start chugging water. Or, like, you can feel the sickness. I, I, I didn't feel so hot when we were heading out to Masters Nationals last year because it just, yeah, yeah. It crept up on me, and I know that elevation really screws with me. If I, it's weird. If I fly somewhere, I'm okay. When I've driven into it, it like, for some reason, it really messes with my with my body. But, um, dude, that's incredible. I'm just like sitting here thinking about that, and I remember, you know, I watch through Instagram, or whatever, and a guy had commented as you were going through Texas, like, "Hey, just make sure you keep your lights charged," and da 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 da, and. So did you have panniers or how did you, did you have, a, how do you carry this, the clothes on your backpack? I just brought a, I just brought a backpack, man. Um, a backpack the whole time? I thought about it. Like I could get panniers and all that and that's nice, but that's extra drag too. Was a backpack uh, annoying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after a couple of days, like the rubbing, uh, it like made a sore there on my, uh, my back. Yeah. A little but backpack, I just stamp, stamp. suck it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I got a backpack, and because of COVID, the hotels were like 30 bucks a night. So, <laughs> like 30, 40 bucks a night. It's like it was nothing. Crazy. Like 17 days, I just knocked it out, and uh, it was amazing. Like, it was. <laughs> it's like, just go knock out this cross country trip real quick. And, like, I look at like Google Maps sometime. I don't believe I did it. It just, it just blows my mind when you it's look amazing. at it. But now, like, now I'm going like psycho. Like I joined a little uh, sci uh, bicycle touring group. I got on a Facebook issue the other day. And, like they're cycling across Europe. Uh, one in dude, let's ride. You guys riding from Spain to uh, La South in. Africa. In I'm in that I'm in. <laughs> I can see us, man. Just pedaling across Europe. Just dude, too crazy Americans. Let's do it. Let's do it. I will. One, one thing that like, it's super good for uh, for training. One thing I'm trying to do is a uh, a trip across Cuba. Okay. One of my good friends, Jose Mojica, he was the uh, Cuban national champion. I want to see. I haven't talked to Jose about this, but I want to see if he can do a a guided tour and get him some money. You know, because this stuff is rough in Cuba right now. Down Cuba and back. Dude, which be just amazing. I love international travel. I love not like. I love the language barrier. Yeah. I love, I mean, the amazing thing about Europe that we forget coming from the States, like you drive from Philly to Florida. Yeah. There's regional differences, but it doesn't change that much. You go from Spain to Croatia, you see a lot of different stuff. It yeah. is. Oh my God. I, 
COVID's got to go because I want to travel. Some places, <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm freaking out here. I'm like, I yeah. want to be number one on that invite list this time. That would. Well, be- we'll talk later. I, I, was, I was actually able to do a trip from Las Vegas to uh, Boulder, Colorado. I'll do so, that too. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk after, but okay. uh, it, it but is. The point of all this was volume. So you believe in volume. Yeah. Yeah, there's. Once I started working with Gleb, uh, Gleb's old school, man. Like, Gleb is. He was born in the Soviet Union. And this is the same Soviet Union that produced these cyclists, just powerhouse cyclists. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I was doing what you're doing. I, I do a lot of work on uh, rollers now, so I don't have the same volume. Mm-hmm. So it kills me because I want to know how much I'm doing, you know, compared to the other guys. Yeah. I see you, you're 15,000 feet in miles. Oh, man. I want to, you know. I, I want to crank it up. So, there's been a point now where I'm like, man, I could possibly hit 20,000 this year, which would be pretty crazy. I don't know if I'd ever be able to do that again, but go for it. I mean, why yeah, not? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'm gonna keep. I I really like lifting, and so like I'm, I've been slowly switching my focus towards the gym, and um, I don't know. We'll see though. It'd be a pretty cool mark to hit. I always had considered like. 10,000 was my goal for like a really long time. There were a few seasons because of living in upstate New York. I'll yeah. blame it on the winter. It was really more that like the off season then would start. I wasn't lifting a ton and I would just drink too much. And so like September, October, <laughs> November, December, my mileage <laughs> would go way down. Yeah. And it's just stupid. And I'd be like, man, I only hit 9,500 miles this year. Like how'd that happen? Well, cause you're. So I'm super competitive. You know, we all, we're all competitive. Yeah. But so like, I, I, I trip here in the mountains, so like sixty miles for me will have ten thousand feet of climbing. Yeah, I'm in so Memphis, how, like how much uh, elevation gain have they got? Like I'm, I'm like looking on Strava. Zero. So, I'm so, I'm such a dork. Yeah, in that Bro, regard. John, Johnny Mitchell, he he's you know on Eastern Tennessee, so East Tennessee obviously has way more hills. Yeah. He'll do like he's like man, I hit a million feet of elevation today, and I'm like I'm at like four seventy, bro. <laughs> yeah i have yeah. i have less than half of yours it's yeah but that's why i'm averaging like 22 miles an hour on some of these bike rides Dude, some of these yeah i look at some of your rides on there i was like i'm giving like the virtual respect hand man but like yet what well, last week we had a, a guy's go stay at our hotel to get ready for six gap you know six gap right i've never done it i want to do yeah. it but yeah some colombian maybe. guys we did six gap and it was like 10 or eleven thousand feet of climbing but it was only like right at 100 i think it was 98 miles but like on the flats that'd be like 22 out yeah 20 20 yeah. you're looking at 140 almost but yeah okay whatever it's crazy how many mi- and plus now like i have an aero bike that makes that's another mile an hour it's so yeah. crazy um yeah. dude i think one of the things when i was googling you and you're like you know you kind of jumped to this before. I was like, with cycling in life, there's no easy way. It's hard work and you have to think about what you're doing. Uh, there's been several times where I'm like, screw it. I don't want to do this. I'm tired. I can just get a nine to five job, get a page yeah. done, but life's not meant to be easy. And I love just like your, the way you're looking, not at cycling, but just at life. Like, oh, this is hard. Yeah, I'm gonna go do it. Oh, right across America. That sounds pretty insane. Yeah, I'm gonna go do it. Like you just, giving stuff a shot and I man it's a really great thing to read to remind ourselves of like we're here once go yeah. try something do something even if it's going to be really hard and you might fall flat on your face who cares like and social media has come up in this conversation a few times but I think yeah. we're, we're it's so easy for us to be like I got to make sure I'm putting out only me winning because if I lose I'm yes. almost like a chump yes but it's like, yeah. oh, man, just go do the hard thing. Try something different. I really respect that a lot. It was really cool to read that. Um, I've had to work on my social media, too, because I'm not, like, a social media type of guy. But I really needed it for cycling to make the connections to get my name out there. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I won't post anything. I'm, I'm fine with not posting anything. But, like, you need that. You're so good. We talked about this in Tennessee, but the Gary V mentality for the social media, you just, yeah. you're so good at that. Love that. Like I see you and I'm like, okay. All right. Brenda's got his game, man. I got, I got, I got to work on this, man. And that's why you're developing your, so your coaching. Yeah. That's why people know who you are, uh, which, which is awesome. I respect that a lot. 
Thanks, man. Yeah, we've been, you know, really when we started Evoke January 2019, I said to Patrick, and I always bring this back as like kind of like a mindset. I was like, how do we get people in Oregon to know about us? Like, I don't want to just coach people in Memphis. I don't want to just coach people in Rochester. Like, I feel like a lot of the stuff that we're talking about, we started this because we were on a phone conversation. I was like, yo, dude, we should be recording this. And he's like, that's not a bad idea. And I'm like, we should just start putting out content. Like, this would help this conversation. This conversation will help people. Um, and that's really kind of where it all started. So I appreciate you saying that because we've been definitely putting in the time to, to, you know, I watched all the Gary V stuff, like how do we promote stuff the right way? And I don't want it ever to come across as like, we know everything. We're, yeah. you know, yeah. cat one. I'm not even a pro cyclist. I just really love it. And yeah, it's- but you would, if you got into it, if you got into it when you were younger, you would be. I, I, I know, I think we've had this conversation maybe. before. You and I both know you would be but you know what maybe i wouldn't because maybe i would have got into it and maybe i would have burned out or maybe i would have been as i think my obsession with it came at a really good point in my life because i found cycling when get out of college start working and i was 26 so it's kind of like it's really hard to get people together to play basketball it's really like yeah. you're kind of more just doing social stuff and i remember leaving a bar one night being like so is this my life? Like, yeah. you like go to work and then I do these like social things and then I go to bed and then it's the weekend and then I go to work and I do these. And I'm like, is this, is this my cycle? Like, I don't, I don't feel competitive. I don't feel like I'm achieving stuff. Like yeah. my achievements were like sales numbers. And I was like, this is not, something doesn't seem right. And then I found cycling. And, and it's like, really easy to get get trapped in that lifestyle man i'd be so much more successful monetarily if i wouldn't cycle (laughs) but but you see these guys these millionaires that they're alcoholics they divorce their wives they're living alone and it's about you have to know your your why you have to have a reason Mm -hmm. to do this Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's a balance. There's a fine line. I think, you know, it's, um, yeah, I mean, back, yeah. back, it's like social media. We never would have been able to create this type of thing if it wasn't for a guy like Gary V who's talking about, I mean, I go into forums and just talk to people and answer questions. And that's kind of one way we got our name out. And it's really one of his books is jab, 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 right. Yeah. I've get, read that. Yeah. Give, 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 and then ask for the business. So it's like, yeah. after I've put out 80 videos and I've helped you in this, and it's like, hey, man, are you looking for a coach? Is your friend looking for a coach? Like, we're here. Hook us up. Like, you know, give us a shout out. So The good thing about what you do is that, there, yes, there's a lot of good coaches, but there are a lot of very poor coaches in the U.S. Cut and paste. And some of these guys, they're just re- – they're a page ahead of uh, – they're reading, they just regurgitate the information. Uh, and for some reason, a lot of them focus on the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, because they don't know how to focus on the technique, the technique, the technique. They don't know how to focus on the, the uh, strategy, the tactics. Mm-hmm. It is easier just to say, that's why I'm four, wait for a killer, you know, to regurgitate that information. And it, it has to go alongside the tactics the psychology the psychology is more important than anything else in the sport Mm -hmm. as you know psychology of racing psychology of training psychology of it is it's horrible it's so hard it's really hard now i guess to play devil's advocate to that i think while the watts are important i think and it's hard to teach sometimes the sixth sense of that person on your shoulder in the race but i think it can be taught in the training in how people approach intervals. When you see yes. someone that's like, I couldn't do it and I quit at number five. I'm like, but you just did the one before f- within five Watts. You yeah. that's, a, that's a win. That's a completion. It's back to this over obsession. I mean, I've had athletes that were like, I'm a failure. And I'm like, you missed it by literally two Watts. That's like a, you, a fart on the bike would have been two more. Watts. <laughs> like what? Yeah. What? And then, the comment that I get from a lot of people are number one, you make me rest more than I want to. But number two, when I go hard, you make me go really freaking hard because people don't rest enough. People they don't do rest not rest enough. enough. They don't go hard enough. It's like the yeah. Tim Fusick says that the hard days aren't hard enough and the easy days are too hard. Who said, who said that? 
Tim Cusick. He does yeah. like a lot of the WKO stuff. And so I, yeah. I really like a lot of his stuff. Um, and he, and, and so I'll have athletes that I'll give them really hard workouts and they'll fail them. And we have gotten away from, if you, have you heard of training and racing with a power meter? The yeah. book. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good book. It's a it's good, good book. book. So I'm like, maybe yeah. he doesn't like power meter. Okay. But in the back, the appendix, there are workouts that are grizzly bears. Like, dude, you read yeah. them and you're like, I don't even think this is humanly possible. Yeah. So go back maybe five or six years ago, Patrick Wall and I we were talking about this. I'm like, dude, have you ever tried these? Like, I, I know I can't do these. Like, I'm looking at a, the first third. Yeah. So he went out as a guinea pig and started to try to do some of these kitchen sink workouts. The first one he got, he's like, dude, I got 20% through. A couple weeks later, he got 30% through. We're talking like a year down the road. He's like, I just did that workout. And that's when we started to realize, yeah. you know, the cumulative effect of training, but also that it is okay if you suck at VO2 max and you fail it for. Yes. Everyone, yes. And, and there's a ton of coaches and there's a lot of people that I respect. They're like, well, if you're failing, dial back the intensity. Or I'm like, no, dude, just you realize you suck at this right now. You need to work at it guess what? You're not going to get a medal after this workout. You, this is, you are bad at this. And we yeah. played here. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. so I have a heart. There's just athletes where it's like, I had a person quit that was just like, you're setting me up for failure. I'm like, okay. Said differently. I'm showing you things that you're really bad at. So when this happens in a race, we're going to work on it. And every week they get a little bit farther, but they weren't completing the workout, but they made progress. Yeah but they wanted perfection. And that's one thing that I just stole from Tom Brady. Who in a podcast I love Tom said, Brady. He said, can we start looking at progress versus perfection? And that's one thing that I'm going to try and preach more to uh, some of my athletes that need to hear that. Like, it's okay if you fail at this. I mean, there are workouts that I do that I'm like, this is going to suck. And I might only get halfway through, but if I did 5% more than last week, that's a W. Like that's, that's yeah. my W the next yeah. step might be able to do it two times as much as me, but that's okay. I'm not him and I can't compare myself to him. So and that comes back to the uh, cheerleader in Marine drill sergeant. Mm -hmm. How many guys wash out of basic? A lot, a lot of guys. And what you're not doing a paper as a paper cutter, you know, a little, uh, uh, you're not, you don't have one training program and you're yeah, sending it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know these guys, I know these guys. Okay, and I, I talk to these guys. So I, like, I just copy and paste my I, I, on the copy and paste my training for all these athletes. I'm like, you're basically stealing these guys' money because they can do the same thing online. It just, I've and that's yeah. I mean, people will be like, dude, you don't have to go down this road with them because that's my one. My biggest thing is, I went out. There are coaches that have been like, dude, you need to be selling templates. And I'm like, but that's not really what an athlete needs. I'm like, but that's how you can scale. And I'm like, but that's not what I'm here for. Uh, so, yeah, it's a tough – I think there's a place for showing athletes, the, the newest cyclists, saying, hey, man, you don't need to pay me, but go online and just Google, like, a yeah. calendar. You can find yeah. them. When you can't make gains after that, that's when you should talk to me but I'm not going to take your $75 when that's something that's free online. And it just yeah. doesn't, I want the athlete that's like, that just wants more than a template that like you're saying, they want to talk to human being. They want to have the reassurance when I look at their training each week and say, Hey man, like there are people that are paying a lot of money. I look through their training. They like hit me up and like, yo, will you connect, look through, see what I've done. I'm like, where does you, where does your coach comment on your stuff? And they're like, I don't get comments. I'm like, how do you know if you're doing well or not? Like, yeah. so anyways, tell one me. One thing I want to say, just one thing before I want to say, uh, uh, like 15 minutes ago, <laughs> yeah. but the mind always goes first. The psychological side of training, the psychological side of racing, the mind always goes first. There's always that moment you say, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. These guys, and one thing that happens is you, you when you're training, you try to dehumanize the people they say these guys are animals these guys don't breathe these guys they're not look at him he's not even hurting but if you could see behind their glasses they're squinting they they're pushing their body to the absolutely hardest point i remember when i went to belgium the first year the race i was psychologically destroyed i went to this kermit there's 160 guys and 150 of them are stronger than me i i had 
I come back, my wife's there. We're in this little, we're in this little cow pasture place by Odenarde. And I was like, these guys, like, <laughs> I go to every single race. I finished every race, but I would just get destroyed. One race, I had a 180 heart rate average. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like i don't i don't have any more gears to yeah but first i got annihilated i went back the next year with that whole off season i destroyed myself okay and i i came close i i got top tens i came close to winning i sold it off a couple of times and i look at the guys that that beat me and they're all riding world tour now uh but it's all set it's all the mind always goes first yeah Wow. Sorry for cutting you off. Yeah, it's one that No, no, that that's a good – tell me more, though, about – we kind of got off the sidetrack of going international. Like, so then you – how did you link up with this team in China, and what has that experience been like? Okay. Um, I was with – an American squad was getting a, a group together to go race uh, in Poyang Lake in China. I think it's 2015, maybe? Um, again, I had no business being on that squad. Did Kevin Gherkins go on this? I think there are two squads. I think uh, – what's the guys? What are those guys? Uh, but another team went also. Okay. Uh, and I was on, like, the non-good American squad. <laughs> B team. Nope, no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So – and I didn't make the cut. So they they, they, they say, okay, you're, you're with us. We're going. We're going to – it's an American international squad. And uh, they picked another guy, which they should have picked. I mean, he was stronger than me. I, one of my friends to this day, actually. Uh, and at the time, he was stronger than me. I would have picked him. Uh, and I was really mad, man. Like, I had, like, the invitation and everything. And I really wanted to race this race. You know, it's a two-week-long two stage race in, in China to Poyang Lake. Uh, all five-star hotels. And I was mad. I was like, I want to race this race. Yeah. So... About three months before the race, I wrote and called every single team <laughs> that raced in this race before. I said, listen, I'm, I'm in Belgium currently. Uh, I want to race this race. You have a spot with me. Every single team, I feel like two or three years. And um, I, I, most of them didn't respond to me. Or someone said, no, go away, leave us alone. And one team responded to me uh, from Taiwan. They said, yeah, we need, we need riders. We need you and one more guy. I was like, okay. I said, we'll pay for your flight. We'll, pay, we'll give you a bike here to race. And uh, why don't you race with us? Right, let's go. Giddy up. So they paid for my flight from Paris to uh, China. One of, my, one of my friends, they paid for his flight also, a sprinter. And... Uh, Two week long race. Um, everything was covered. I was able to get gone to a break, attacked, got second in one stage, got three thousand dollars. And I was all mad, man. I was mad I got second. And the guy that beat me is uh riding world tour now. Um no, <laughs> so, who is it? uh what's his name? He he rode for Katusha. Okay. I can look it up if you want me to. Um okay. but he's riding for the AG two R British guy. What's his name, dude? Is he, he's a twin, but really nice guy. Yeah, his brother also rode uh, the Conti. I don't think he made a world tour. His brother didn't, but yeah, and he beat me by like a bicycle length. So, but uh, and I, because of that, uh, I made more contacts with the guys. My first co tour contract. I'm in a. He's got a hustle, you know. I'm in the tour of uh, Hungary. And I made this 200K stage, okay? It was 100 degrees in this race. And, you know, I'm screwed. I'm attacking. You know, <laughs> I can't compete with these guys on the, you know, the sprint. They're going to beat me. I'm attacking. Yeah. So I attack. We've got a six-man group. And uh, we gain a minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes on the peloton. Peloton's done. On another good tactic, on the really hot days, you're going to suffer wherever you are. Mm -hmm. So you might as well suffer in the break while the guys in the Pelotons are sweating at 100 degrees. We, you know, it's from Florida. You know, this, is, this is ABC tactics. So I I'm in the, don't agree with that, though, because I've screwed yeah. myself doing that. 
I've been in the break and just that riding at like threshold as opposed to getting some like breeze of being in a group. I'm 50, 50 on that. And that might've worked for you, but that has backfired for me. How many times, okay. I got a devil's advocate. Okay. How many times have you been in the Peloton and you're suffering when there's a break up the road? Well, not many. Cause I'm like, usually well, I'm usually like attacking like crazy. Well, you're Brendan Housler. So, <laughs> well, I, I have been though. You think sometimes the it's heroic, yeah. sometimes it's moronic. It's like one or the other. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I've been in the, I mean, been, that was the thing. I was like, dude, yeah. patient. I watched that break go, and I was like, this is driving me crazy. And yeah. then it was, you know, bridge to them. They were roasted and just rode away with Michael Hernandez. So it was my patience won. That's how I won yeah. the Masters, uh, yeah. Masters race. It was really hot in Georgia, and uh, a couple guys went off, and I was like, the year before I did too much work and Owen shot when he had bridged up with uh, Jay John, I just forget his name, JJ, who's on Bissell. I was toast by the end and like Owen just rode away on the final, like it's like a 30 second climb. But the yeah. next year I waited, I waited, I waited. And the last lap I attacked, got in a group of five of us. Owen was driving it and I was kind of like, waiting for this climb again i'm like i am winning today i'm not gonna do yeah. too much work and watching the guys and long story short had the kick at the end so i don't know i'm torn on that one that one's tough but that's just like okay this is my story yeah <laughs> don't ruin my story <laughs> okay um so, so anyway. I'm, in, I'm in the break and i'm in the i have no business being in this break okay there's guys from the Serbian national team, uh, two guys from the BMC continental team from uh, Czech Republic, I think they were. Okay. These guys rode pro Conti. I'm in this break. I'm looking at these guys, you know, as you, you think. And, like, I knew I'm the guy that's going to get dropped, okay? <laughs> but I felt good, okay? We got four minutes. Like, if I can hold this, this is one of my first UCI races. Well, this would be amazing. I feel good. Um, we got to four minutes, everyone's helping each other, you know, hey, good job, hey. You know, it's not to that cutthroat uh, time. But my team car is, uh, is behind us. And I didn't get any water. <laughs> so it's 100 degrees, and I, I finish my bottles, and I, I'm, I'm, I start to hurt, you know. And the team car comes up, and I'm just chugging water. I'm, ch I, I'm chugging it down and as you know your body can't digest that much water when what is what happens it goes right to your extremities okay so i chug like four bottles within like 40 30 minutes okay and it goes right to my my feet so my feet start to bulge okay and i un i i got i um uh, unstrap them and they keep bulging and I've never, we've been in the, we were in the break for four hours. Okay. We're coming up on the closing circuit. There's a little uh, town, a uh, little cobble, cobblestone. It's beautiful, hungry. And I am just, I am dying. Because, yeah, my legs are dead and my feet, they're like, they're not fitting in my shoes. Had that ever happened to you before? No. I no. would have been freaked out. Like, what's going on right now? Yeah. And I'm freaking out. Okay. And, we're 10k we have four minutes and i'm dying like we're coming to the cutthroat time where you like you have zero friends you know everyone is like your best friend from growing you know how it is like yeah. everyone's your best friend since growing up but yeah you, man, you're so strong great pool man great pool and they're all talking like in hungarian i don't understand anything you're saying and the cutthroat moment happens and i just i am dead i had four minutes like okay really i'm gonna make it to the end i'm yeah. just and they passed me, the Peloton. I tried to see the Peloton. They passed me. I got dead last place. And I'm, I'm crushed. I am, like, psychologically, I'm destroyed. Because I think, you know, Raleigh, like, you see the guy, you see Homeboy that won the GC because of our break. And you got last place. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, it's just another, another example. Well, I'll, say another, I'll come back to Hungary, but I'm on a continental team um, based in Europe. And first race of the year, the Vuelta Uruguay, 
you know, uh, 10 day UCI stage race in South America. Like I'm killing myself, man. I tra- I went to Gleb's house in Washington to train. Like I am motivated. Okay. And if Gleb's like a super intense guy, okay. Like he'll be six hour training rides in the pouring down rain in Washington. Okay. So I'm like in like zero, like sympathy. I'm like, Gleb, I'm kind of tired. Like, yeah. like it does not matter. You train. Is it super? Does, okay. So Sounds I come awesome. to this I, yeah, I try. Okay, so I come to I come to Uruguay. I, do, I am just like, I am, I'm thin. First race, I got sixth place. Like, uh, like I'm, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm here to win. Okay. Second, the final race, we're going into uh, the Montevideo, and like it, cycling, you wouldn't think this, but cycling is like God in Uruguay. Really? Yeah, yeah. So stage ten UCI race, we're going into Montevideo. They shut down the interstate, okay, the main road heading into uh, Montevideo. And I've chills talking about this, but there are thousands of people lining up, yeah, just screaming and supporting us. So I make the break this day. We got five man break again, okay? Going into Montevideo, there's as long as you can see, just thousands of people. Child, I, I have chills. It's a, it's amazing. I'll never forget this moment in my life. I said, okay, I wanna I wanna win this race. My first year on a Conti team, you know, I wanna I want this W. We we haven't got a W until then. Our whole team, we got podiums or whatnot. So I hit it with 5k to go. Okay, uh, I go solo. I drop two of the uh, we drop two of the guys. Uh, two three yeah, and two of them go with me. A Brazilian and an Argentinian guy, both pros. And uh, 3K, they counterattack me. And I'm feeling great. I'm like, okay. Like, I'm thinking like my podium, you know, like a little selfie on the top. And because I see these guys. I know I'm stronger than them. I've been sizing them up for 80Ks in the, um, mm-hmm. in the break. They counterattack me right away, just as they should do. I go around the counter, and one of the, uh, one of the riders, if it was on purpose, I don't know. Um, but they – take out my front wheel God. they break my spokes no team so i have to sit there for three minutes <laughs> and wait for the peloton to pass me i'm, I'm crying like I'm, I'm not an emotional guy man oh my i worked gosh. so hard for this and yeah, I was just, and I got, I think I got second or the last place. Oh my. And I'm, I'm destroyed. Like three, it's two and a half K. And you watch the guy that clipped me take the W solo. And you know, and this is, it's just, it's just Fred. You know, like this guy, you see this guy and you know, you're going to beat him. One more counter, he's done. And that's what I'm talking about, the psychological uh pitfall but okay so, yeah <laughs> i'm so sad about that so it still hurts me <laughs> but okay and you're going back after the uh the hungarian race uh after that race i'm destroyed okay like i'm talking to my wife like oh i almost won oh you're like oh you're so strong you know you're you're i love you you know <laughs> she's out there helping the team and uh I met a uh, uh, Argentinian uh, DS guy. He had an issue, and I speak Spanish. I was like, "Oh, this one young." He started to talk and whatnot, and uh, because of that contact, they saw my race, my uh, my break. He's like, "Man, you looked really strong." I explained to what happened. He's like, "Wow." He's like, "If we need a rider, we'll get in contact with you guys." And uh, we met and had lunch in Belgium. They were living there. The team was based there, and I was racing there. And because of that, I made my uh, – signed my first contract. Again, I had no business being on that team. Um, guys were much stronger than me. We had the Cuban National – Sounds like is the name of the game. What's that? Networking is the name of the game. And you know that. We had the Cuban National Champion that year. We had Ivan Stevich. The mat- he was the uh, – the B world champion on that team who's preparing for Rio Olympics the last year. And so I had no business to be on this team. I was just there to learn as much as I can and to try to, uh, we, we got invites to 
1.1 races uh, in France, UCI. There were, were they, we, we would come to the race, guys would ask for my autograph. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like all right, I'm living it up. I got the shades and everything. Uh, but it was an amazing experience. Race with a uh, five in Cancelada, his last race in Belgium. Wow. Race with Tom Boonen. Got dropped by Tom <laughs> Got dropped by Fabian. Um, it, it's just amazing. I'll never forget uh, the pro kermesses in Belgium. And just, I'm, I'm so thankful to have those. And you come back to the U.S. and you just dust these guys after having raced uh, at this level. That's wild. So what is uh, what do you think has been your favorite race? It sounds like the one in Uruguay is going to be pretty tough to beat. There's so many. Um, Every race is special mm-hmm. for uh, for one reason or another. My, I mean, of course, my favorite, one of my favorite races was my uh, my UCI win, Dominican Republic, um, soloing in, uh, getting twenty seconds on a on a pro team on a pro field. There's 150, 160 guys at that race because um, I was in South America training on elevation at eight, nine, ten thousand feet. I went there for two months. And I just I destroyed myself. Brandon, I was at seventy one kilos. So what is that like one fifty something pounds? I don't know, but yeah. I was a toothpick. Um and I, I I just leading up to that race, I did absolutely all I did, I would train, I would go back, I would rest, my wife would give me a massage, I would train. That year I signed with a but it was that race. That year I signed with a Belgian team, and I did some races in the U.S. and international races. But that year, I did the Vuelta, where I won the race, got a couple, got a couple top tens. Came back to Joe Martin. We did the Vuelta Tour of Martinique, which never do that race. It's horrible. <laughs> Came back did the Dairylands, the Crits. Then what did we do? Then after that. We did uh, Poor Young Lake for a second time. Uh, then I did uh, Walter Nicaragua. Then, uh, then I the, the Florida State Road Race. I just I just dusted them. Like wow. I had so many race miles in your legs. Wow. Even though I got sick in the middle of the season, um, but I just we were flying, just flying. When you said you got really skinny, do you think that you lose power when you're losing that much weight, or was people it- say that? It and it depends how you do it. Okay. I was. I did it. I. If you lose a couple kgs, you know, in a month or in a couple of weeks, yeah, you're gonna lose power. But if you take it down little by little by little. Uh, you're going to keep your power. It, it depends how you do it. People, uh, there's been studies that show how if you have more fat muscles, the recovery time is lower. Um, but I kept my power. I kept my TT. Like I know, I know my, my 40K times, my time trialing times from them, from then. And uh, yeah, I, I kept my power 100%. It's interesting because I've gone, like my weight fluctuates like probably more than most being so big like a pound to me is much less like overall percentage than someone who's smaller yeah i've tried to get super skinnier and i've like it would seem okay but then sometimes i feel like i'm missing the overdrive and it's weird trying to find that balance i know is something that people talk about a lot in cycling and I don't know. I just think sometimes, especially because of American style racing, where there aren't most of the time, there's not a lot of 20, 30 minute climbs. I'm like, exactly. Exactly. Dude, you're going to be a couple pounds heavier, but you feel better and you're riding strong. Do that. Don't. What you, are you at now? What, what, what weight? So I'm usually around like 182 to, if I'm super carved up, I'll be like 186. What's um, your, how, how tall are you? 6'5. Exactly. So I've gotten down to 177, and I'll look leaner, and I don't feel like underweight. I look more like shredded, but it's hard to go really deep. And I can't I, – I still – I mean, 10 years of doing this, I just don't perform as well. Um, so I don't know. It's weird. And I think then, too, it'll be interesting to see where science takes us and shows about, like, different body types. And Yeah. Um, I talked to Johnny Mitchell. I don't know if you know Johnny. Yeah, yeah, I know Johnny. 
And he's just shredded. And he's like, dude, the funny thing is, he's like, I don't do anything but bike. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, I don't do core or anything. And dude, just have you, bi- have you seen Johnny's biceps? Anything on that like- Johnny's muscle. I'm like, he's like, if you, if you, I was watching this show where this guy was talking about how he was actually starving because he was only eating bison and it was so lean. I'm like, that's Johnny Mitchell. Like, if, you, if we had to eat people and you hate Johnny, you wouldn't survive because there's no fat. Well, I'm overweight right now, too. I mean, I just – I'm overweight right now. Well, I'm excited. Uh, this is going to be my first totally sober off-season and, like, going to the gym and making every workout really count. And uh, I'm not going to gain weight this year. I usually Congratulations, gain- man. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm actually – I'm doing this like – th- I decided I'm going to do a thousand-day challenge and just – it kind of started after my bachelor party. I went to uh, – New Orleans and was just like I came back and I was like, dude, I- New Orleans is gnarly. I was there two New weeks ago. Is gnarly man, I was. It's like <laughs> I, was in the and I was like, people are out of control. Like it's like Sodom and Gomorrah, man. <laughs> dude, people were out, like, it. There were times. I mean, it was pretty late. It was like one, two. We were going to get some pizza, and I was like, yo, dude. Like now, I see when you read about stories like things like shit broke out like things can get crazy there so we 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 after the alabama S- uh, state crit championship i told my wife let's go drive there new orleans it's like oh yeah like i found like a hotel right in the french quarter Ooh. like i like i got out of the car my baby and my my belarusian wife i'm like yeah we're not gonna no. we're not gonna be doing this <laughs> yeah. it's an interesting place i would um I'm excited to visit some time without it being a bachelor party. We had a we had a great time. It was great, That's awesome. great three three of my friends went down, but yeah, it was a good way to be like, oh, I'm gonna just clean it up and then decide. I'm like, man, maybe I should just go for a while. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's gonna be a good thousand days, that's for sure. But yeah, yeah, dude, this was awesome, man. I appreciate you sharing your perspective on riding. It was I just looked down like, oh wow, we've been talking for 90 minutes. Um, okay. okay, so. We'll have to talk, and we're going to have to get a long bike trip together, and we're going to get somebody to come and film this thing. And Oh, know, man, you're so good at this. Yeah. The truth. What, uh, it's going to be money. We're going we're gonna to make a sick video of this. So I look when are you this. thinking about doing it? Because I was actually going to try to do it um, actually today, this <laughs> Saturday. Yeah, I was thinking about it actually Saturday. You're like, no, 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 like two weeks ago. <laughs> no like two weeks ago i started to plan it um from and las vegas from lots from las vegas to uh to boulder i need more than like two days time no 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 no. Like, i was like a couple weeks back i was planning it but i called it off um i wonder there's a northern part through uh salt lake city it is so beautiful it's all the altitude it's gonna be um, uh, pretty chilly there soon or is it that's now? what I was, that's what I was gonna try to do it now before it gets so cold. Um, but it's at altitude too, so like when it gets cold, it gets frigid. You would instead, dude. Um, yeah, I'll, we'll we'll talk about it though. Next summer, let's plan a Europe one. We're we're, we're bike tourers now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're starting to get yeah, get a little <laughs> little bells. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll text you. Uh, I'll write you, but. I want to do a ride to Asheville and back up Mount Mitchell. A little oh, three day. Yeah. I want to do that. I think it's like 120 from here to Mount to uh to Asheville. Then ride Asheville and ride back. I could three be, day. I'm actually going to Blowing Rock, North Carolina in two weeks to uh just south of Boone and doing Oh, oh that's nice riding. Cool. I'm gonna do the Boone. They have a Grand Fondo, so I looked up that route. Uh oh, Grand Fondos, Brendan. Dude, I love Grand Fondo. <laughs> <laughs> Love grandma. Yeah. So, on that note, we uh, I greatly appreciate your time, man. Yeah, man. Knowledge definitely will be helpful for a lot of people to soak some of that up and look forward to getting some rides in soon. All right, I appreciate it, and let me know what you're thinking. I will. We'll talk soon, and uh, have a good rest of the day. All right, everyone. See you, man. All right, see ya.